A company decides to manufacture a soft drinks can with a capacity of 500 millilitres. The company models the can in the shape of a right circular cylinder with radius r centimetres and height h centimetres. In the model, they assume that the can is made from a metal of negligible thickness, uh, and part A wants us to prove that the total surface area, s centimetre squared, of the can is given by s equals 2 pi r squared plus 1000 divided by r. So the first thing we need to do is look back at the question um, for any clues they might have given us for how we can do this. So the first thing we're told that uh, is important is that it has a capacity of 500 millilitres. And what this is essentially telling us is that this is its volume is 500 millilitres. It's the amount of liquid of soft drink that this can can take. Uh, and this is the volume. Now, the second thing we're told, uh, and just to say a right circular cylinder is one that has a top and a bottom. You know, it's not it's not hollow. Um, and this is something we need to consider when finding the surface area that it has uh, a top, a lid and a bottom. So now if we recall the equation for the surface area of a right cylinder, um, the equation generally is that it's 2 pi r squared plus pi r h, 2 pi r h. Uh, and similarly, the equation for the volume of a right cylinder um, is pi r squared h. So using the fact that we um, we previously said that the volume of the can is 500 millilitres and we know the equation for volume is pi r squared h, if we say therefore that pi r squared h must be equal to 500. Now to rearrange this, to know what to rearrange it for, uh, one way you could do this is looking back at the um, equation that they want us to find finally. So in this equation, we can see that there is R's, but there is no H term anywhere, which suggests that at some point during our workings out, we want to um, cancel out the H's or substitute something in for H. So using this information, uh, if we try to rearrange this so we get H equals something, we get it in terms of H, uh, dividing by pi R squared tells us that H is equal to 500 pi over pi r squared. Now if we go back to the formula for surface area, um, if we say that therefore the surface area of the can, uh, which they have called s, is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, but we know now that h is equal to 500 divided by pi r squared. So if we substitute this in to the equation, um, and say that this is multiplied by 500 over pi r squared as h. And then we solve using this. We get that s is equal to 2 pi r squared. This bit is the same. But we now have 2 pi r multiplied by 500 on the numerator, which is 1000 pi r. And then this is divided by pi r squared. And you can see that on the numerator and the denominator, we have a pi. So these can cancel out as pi divided by pi is 1. Uh, and we have an r on the numerator and an r squared on the denominator, which means we can cancel out one of these r's. And the r squared simply becomes r because um, r squared divided by r is just r. So if we write this out now with what we have cancelled out, we're left with s equals 2 pi r squared plus 1000 over r, which is the form that the question wanted us to find it in. Uh, now, there are three marks available for this question, uh, and our first mark comes from setting the pi r squared h equal to 500, so acknowledging that 500 millilitres was the volume, and therefore it must be equal to that. Uh, our second method mark comes from substituting in h equals 500 over pi r squared into our equation for surface area. Uh, so that gets us two marks. And then our final mark comes from simplifying this and getting the given answer that they wanted in the question, which is this one over here. So that's all three marks. 
Given that R can vary, part B wants us to find the dimensions of a can that has minimum surface area. So the way we find something um, that says a minimum or maximum surface area, um, the way we do this is similar to on a graph when we find a minimum point. So on a graph, if we want to find the minimum point uh, along a curve, we differentiate. Uh, and it's exactly the same here uh, in a more kind of practical problem. We do the exact same thing. Um, so if s is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 1,000, and if we want to rewrite this um, so it's a lot easier to differentiate, uh, 1,000 over r can also be written as 1,000 r to the power of minus 1. It's the exact same thing, uh, just a way to rewrite it so it's a lot easier to differentiate. Um, so if we differentiate this so we can find the minimum, um, we write that ds by dr that's what it's in terms of now, not, say, dy by dx, as many questions are. Um, ds by dr is, and then we do 2 pi multiplied by 2, um, because 2 is the power, so we do 2 pi multiplied by the power, which is 4 pi, and then we take away 1 from that power, so r to the power of 1 is just r, uh, and here we do, the power is minus 1, so minus 1 multiplied by 1,000 is minus a thousand r uh, and then minus one take away one is minus two uh, and this can also be written as um minus a thousand over r squared again exact same thing so what we do next um is because we're finding the minimum we say that this happens at ds by dr equals zero so again, if we go back to the idea of a curve, um, we find the point when the gradient is equal to zero. Um, and it's exactly the same here. So if ds by dr is equal to zero, that, that means that 4 pi r minus 1000 over r squared is also equal to zero because that is what ds by dr is. Uh, and now we just want to rearrange this. Um, so to get rid of this r squared on the denominator here, if we multiply everything through by r squared, we're left with 4 pi r cubed minus 1,000 is equal to 0, because 0 times r squared is still 0. So now if we rearrange this to get it in terms of r, or r cubed to start off with, um, if we add 1,000 to both sides and then divide by 4 pi, we get that r cubed is equal to 1,000 over 4 pi. Uh, and then if we cube root this, um, do that in our calculator, we get that to three significant figures, r is equal to 4.30 uh, centimetres. So that's to 3sf. So the question wants us to find the dimensions. Uh, and what this means is it wants us to find the radius and the height. So we've got the radius. Uh, and before, we found an equation for the height, which was h equals 500 over pi r squared. That was just an equation we found in part a. Uh, so if we substitute in r equals 4.30 centimetres uh, into this equation, we get that h is equal to 500 over pi r squared, where r is 4.30, and therefore h is equal to 8.6 zero centimeters again to three significant figures um and these are our dimensions just to make it a bit clearer if we just finish off by stating them together um just to make it very obvious what we are saying is our answer uh and the five marks for this question come from uh, so our first mark is a method mark for differentiating um, S. So that gives us our first mark. Uh, and we also get an answer mark for differentiating correctly. Uh, so you get a mark just for trying to differentiate and then a second mark for actually doing it correctly. So this is with two marks, uh, a method and an answer mark. Um, and then we get a method mark for saying that ds by dr is equal to zero uh, and therefore setting 4 pi r minus 1,000 over r squared equal to 0. Um, we get an answer mark for 
finding the radius uh, so that could be here that could we could also write that down here but it's the exact same thing uh, we get an answer mark for the radius and then we get our last answer mark for the height so the height being 8.60 centimeters with reference to the shape of the can suggest a reason why the company may choose to not manufacture a can with minimum surface area so in part b in the previous part we found that a can with minimum surface area has a radius of 4.30 centimeters to three significant figures and a height of 8.60 centimeters to three significant figures so there are actually a number of um, reasons we can put the mark scheme accepts any valid reason um, but some of the examples they've given um, one could be that if you look at these two numbers you may realize that the radius is actually half the um, height which means the diameter of the um, cylinder is the same as the height which makes the can more square in, in its profile um, so its diameter is the exact same as its height uh, and generally, for a drinks can, the um, height is a lot taller than the diameter. Uh, so that could be, that's one of the reasons listed. Another one is that a radius of 4.3 centimetres is quite large um, for a drinks can, especially when we consider that, therefore, the diameter is 8.6 centimetres, um, which is quite big to hold and quite big to drink from, because um, we need to remember the context of the question is that this is a drinks can. Um, so we can put any valid reason, those are some of the ones listed. So if we said that, if the radius is 4.30 centimetres and the height is 8.60 centimetres, both the 3SF, then the can is square in profile. But since all cans, are, all drinking cans, are taller than they are wide, um, the company may choose to not manufacture a can with this minimum surface area as it doesn't fit the standard shape of a drinking can. Uh, and this would get us our one mark because we've given a valid reason why the company may choose to not manufacture a can with a minimum surface area. Um, and as I said before, there are plenty of valid reasons that you could give. Um, only four are listed in the mark scheme, but they accept any valid reason.